that the Lord will have perhaps you ask that the Lord will help to complete your term. And maybe you come back. It is uh, it's about God's arrangement, not us. What are we learning? We are learning that our days are numbered. Our days are numbered. We should have that trust in God who has authority over us. There is a scholar by the names of Wayne Goodem. He wrote a book called Systematic Theology. He's talking about God and he says, God is the cause of his own existence. And because he's the cause of his own existence, therefore he has authority over what he caused to exist. Which means, this God, nobody can claim that he created God. He's the cause of his own existence. But all of us, we are created by God. He has authority over what he created. And he knows when each one of us will leave this planet Earth. And there are some people actually who have lived longer and they would wish to die. And God is saying, you be there. Probably they are no longer useful. Why God is still keeping them here? I don't know. And you find a very useful person as far as, as we are concerned. Like uh, Honorable Sarah and God calls her, I don't understand God. His ways are different from our ways. His thoughts are different from our thoughts. Said the Lord. This is Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. He is different from us. The watch God puts on is different from the watch we are putting on. Different. It is counting differently. You would say, this one would live longer. And God would say, no, that is the end of his or her life. But the Lord is giving us comfort. In Revelations, the power all of us and this is the message Revelation chapter 21 3 and I saw a new heaven a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were pastor and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are past. This revelation came to Brother John in 96 AD. And the message was, God is doing a new thing, and there will be a new Jerusalem. There will be a new city. There will be a new life. God is actually taking us to another level where there is no more crying. You know this world is good, but there are a lot of tribulations. But God is giving us hope that yes, you are going through this, but this is not the end of it all. One scholar said, the end of the rope, the end of the hope. There is hope beyond the rope. There is hope amidst hopelessness. There is hope even amidst death. Because this uh, world where we are, it is good. We must work for it anyway. We must work for it. But there is a time when each one of us will stop and go into another world. But 
where we are going, there is one world and another world. There is heaven, but there is also, there is also hell. So may the Lord help us as we live in this world. You know, he is saying there is a lot of pain here. High blood pressure. There is ulcers. Heart attacks. There are some people actually who cannot survive without some pills every evening or morning. And some others. Some might be... When is he going to finish? Because I have to move out and take my pills. So there are always issues. But he said, this is not the end of it. One day, this pain will be gone. Give God a mighty hand clap. <laughs> Sorrow will be gone. That's our, our comfort. Crying will be gone. No more burying of our dearms. It will be jubilation. But meanwhile, we go through all these pains here. We go through them. There is a lot. We've just made a statement and we found out that uh, even when we talk about issues to have, to have a good life, currently HIV prevalence has gone to the increase and some people don't care and we still call upon religious leaders and MPs to continue talking about it so that we can postpone death because it is going at a high speed now younger people are saying no will they make out make timber out of me no balimba jamumbao no but we need to live to ensure that we revise means that can postpone death there is a death but we can postpone it. The way we behave. I got a, a challenging uh, WhatsApp message yesterday from somewhere. And the younger, uh, these younger people, uh, the, there is a group of younger people who usually go and uh, give money to younger girls, 20,000, 20, and take them and have sex with them. And they were saying, this weekend we are going also. And we pay them 200,000 only, and the language they use, and we chew them. We chew them. And they say, unfortunately, we have HIV AIDS, so that they join our club. And they also begin taking pills all the time. When I wrote that, I said, oh my God. This is so sad to have people who are compassionate and care about others. The language they use, we are giving only 200,000 and chew them. Eh, banang. Chew. <laughs> when I translate the word chew in Uganda, netuba meketa. <laughs> Very bad. So there is a, we can postpone death by changing our behaviors. We can postpone death by the way we handle our souls. By the way, we, we, we should uh, uh, expand our compassion to others. And this is how. Anyway, all of us will die, but we, should, we can postpone it. This death is there for all of us, but one day, God will wipe away our tears. Praise the Lord. But meanwhile, you know, death doesn't come at once for many people. It comes slowly by slowly, step by step. And I discovered it. I have been looking at my, my, my hair. Uh, uh, in, in the mirror before I came and I found I have a lot of white hair in, in, I said eh so I've started dying slowly <laughs> when you see 
someone with the gray hair. That is death slowly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have studied. It was black. I know some people are fighting it. You can see others are fighting it, but when you, you draw nearer, you see that uh, the white ones are also fighting to, to show themselves to the world. When you see people who are putting on glasses, it means they are dying slowly from the eyes. <laughs> if you are seated with somebody near you with the eyes, with the glasses, you know, ah! <laughs> Death is slowly from the eye, from the eyes. <laughs> slowly but sure. Yes. I, wa I, was, st I was studying in, in, in Michigan State and uh, Michigan State is too cold. And then I had to go, they removed my, my, they removed my tooth in, in, in Holland, Michigan. <coughs> now I said, aha, Mukama, I am dying from, from the tooth now. So if you are missing a tooth, you have started from there. Slowly but sure. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you still have the, all the teeth? <laughs> Let me take this. When you see a person with a bald head, that means he's dying slowly. The hairs are going this side. <laughs> but the message, the comforting message is, whatever type of death, that's not the end. Jesus came to conquer death. He died so that we should have life and have it in its fullness. John 14. Death will be there, but that's not the end of life. Jesus died, and what he did, he went down in the grave. And definitely weakened the grave. And those who accept him, and they die in him, they have eternal life. Death is not the end of life. It's just the beginning of another life for those who believe. Give God a mighty hand clap if you accept it. We can be demoralized in life. We can be weak and discouraged, especially when we have our dear ones die. But my brothers and sisters, this is the death of the body. But the real life is still there. And this life is embedded in Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. And when he rose, he got the key of life. And this key is with him to give life. And he will wipe away our tears. Tell your neighbor, he will wipe away your tears. <laughs> to another speaker. A lot of tears. And we definitely crying is inevitable. I heard some people say a believer shouldn't cry. Why? You should cry. Because crying is part of therapy. You cry and you cry. But after crying, come back and remember there is a hope. And there is a hope. This hope it is in Jesus. Why shouldn't we cry? When you lose our dear like Sarah. Yes, death is there, and you can cry, but that's not the end of it all. Only that some people, when they cry, they, have, they utter some bad words, and that's so bad. And you're a Christian. This has been bewitched. This one has been bewitched, and this day is bewitching. This one has been poisoned. I think poison is becoming a common language. And that's why, even when we, we have you visiting us at church, Members of parliament, many people when it comes when to come, it comes to lunch time, the members of they disappear. Hey, where are they disappearing? They fear to be poisoned, hey, even at the church. So people fear. But let me tell you, this is not the end of it all. I want to give you comfort as we mourn. Let us mourn with the hope that Sarah 
who was a Christian, one day, one day, who knows, we may meet her. That's our prayer. And that's my prayer for you. And so let me call upon you. All the tears you have. You know you have a lot of tears. Some of the voters don't love you by the way. You think they love you. They just love you, woman. If you want to, to, to prove me right, go and ask those who lost their votes. No more people are visiting them. People were always coming in the morning for a cup of tea, for problems, they are no longer coming. Because they are not loved. It's only God who loves you by now. Even some of, the, some of your colleagues may not love you. They say, how I wish this one loses this time. And there are others outside there. They are busy campaigning. And for you are busy. Here you are working. Others are campaigning. So let me invite you to have your trust in God who loves you. Others are just lying and saying, you are a man, a woman, you are happy. It is only God who loves you. Some others, they love your money. They don't love you. Tell your neighbor, they just love your money. <laughs> only God loves you. And when you love him, this God will take care of the details. He will wipe away your tears. And I want to call upon you, ensure you have this relationship with Jesus because he's the one who loves you and is the way, the truth, and life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.